Glare is a light phenomenon everyone has experienced in some way. To most, glare is considered as a strong and dazzling light. However, there are actually two kinds of glare that people experience, discomfort glare and disability glare. Glare itself is the illuminance of a light source or object that cause visual impairment within one's field of view. Disability glare is actually a medical condition some people experience and where the retinal image contrast is reduced as a result of intraocular light scatter, or stray light. What this means is that as light enters the eye, light refracts in a way that a sort of haze or flare occurs, similar to a lens flare or light bleed in a camera. Disability glare also impairs the vision of objects without necessarily causing discomfort. This could occur, for example, when driving towards the sunset where the light could reduce the contrast between the driving task and the glare source, in this case the sun, to the point where the task could not be distinguished. In this case, when glare is so intense that vision is completely impaired, it is sometimes called dazzle. Discomfort glare, on the other hand, is probably the one everyone has experienced. There are two forms where the glare is direct or indirect, in any of which the illuminance of a light source, reflection, or bright surface causes harsh light to disturb one vision and can cause pain as the eye struggles to balance the harsh light with the darker setting. Direct glare occurs when the light source with high luminance is in the direct field of view. For example, the sun shining directly in one's eyes or a flash going off unexpectedly. Uh, indirect glare occurs when the light source is outside the field of view but is then reflected by a bright object or reflective surface. For instance, when the sun's light bounces off of someone's wristwatch or phone and it shines directly in your eye. As architects, glare is an incredibly important concept to be considered in design. That extends from reflectivity or gloss of materiality to orientation of and selection of openings to how a space can function as a whole. The goal is not to always reduce glare as sometimes a function or material demands harsh light that will inevitably create glare, such as in a sunroom. There are three main ways to interpret light and how to control it, through direct light, indirect light, and diffuse light. Naturally, direct light will result in harsh contrast and therefore glare either by direct light or through reflection. But sometimes the architect can evoke an emotion for people to experience with this harsh lighting. As seen in many works by Tadao Ando, but primarily in his Church of Light, the church has little interior lighting with a few windows except for a large cross-shaped window on the facade behind the altar. Even if light isn't directly shining through, there is a harsh contrast between the dark interior space to the outdoor space, expressing a sort of immaculate effect from the glare created by the cross into this space. In other times, architects may aim to reduce glare and contrast for a more amicable space. This is where light diffusion and indirect light take focus. Architects can diffuse light by using physical design methods such as screens and canopies to reduce the intensity of light striking on the facade into the indoors. Screens can be used to increase the light in a space while reducing harsh light. Like for example, in this project, Eaterbeek City Hall by BAEB Architects, where tall vertical and white panels act as a screen on this curved facade. The white surface, when struck by the light, creates a sort of glare that allows the interior space to be totally blown up by the diffused light as seen in this interior. 